Good afternoon, everyone. Today is the Solemnity of the Most Sacred Heart of Jesus. This is a beautiful solemnity or feast, as people would call it. It tells us about the very heart, the love of Jesus Christ for you and for me, how his heart is so wide, how his heart bleeds for us, how his heart loves us, how his heart thirsts for us to come to him all who labor and are burdened with life's problems. This is such a beautiful day. When we say the solemnity of the most holy uh, or the most sacred heart of Jesus, holy heart of Jesus, we're talking about a solemnity in the liturgical rank. The Gloria is prayed today, two readings, and the creed. So Sundays are solemnities, aren't they? However, solemnities in this fashion, like the Sacred Heart of Jesus, the obligation to attend Mass is not of obligatory nature, but you should have seen how many people came to Mass this morning. It was beautiful. There was the Sacred Heart statue in front of the altar, flowers around it, and then the candle had rings around them, flower rings around each candle surrounding the altar. It was beautiful. And then we had Sacred Heart candles uh, if anyone wanted to make a donation for one of them, like $5, to take home and light home of the Sacred Heart image on the candle. It was beautiful. So I thank all those people who attended Mass today. We had a nice crowd that came for uh, daily Mass today on this solemnity of the most sacred heart of Jesus. So thank you. So today, I don't know if you have an image of the Sacred Heart or a statue of the Sacred Heart in your home. Or is your heart, is your home enthroned to the Sacred Heart? Those are things that you can be thinking about. So after this pandemic, maybe when we go green, hopefully next Friday or the Friday after that, maybe you can purchase a Sacred Heart statue or a image, a painting of the Sacred Heart or an icon of the Sacred Heart and keep that in your home. Beautiful. Our Lord promised many graces for those who honored that image. He told that to St. Margaret Mary Alacoque. Have you read the Nine Promises of the Sacred Heart? Read that, Google the Nine Promises of the Sacred Heart of Jesus given to St. Margaret Mary Alacoque. Lovely, beautiful. Well, I'm gonna continue my uh, discussion today uh, on the Ten Commandments. Oh, by the way, where am I? Where is Waldo? Well, Father Bellopedi is in the parish office center and in the parish office center there is a room a sitting room for like seminarians or a missionary priest and a bedroom i'm in the sitting room so i'm going to ask our it person just to scan the room so our people could see it so it has a nice little couch right there and then uh she'll t she'll show you the chair and the the tv behind so it's a small room. It's one of those rooms that we used to, it's the old convent, you know, one of the cells. And uh, here you see the sitting uh, chair and then a little TV for the seminarian or the priest visitor who comes to us and spends an overnight. And here I am. Hi. <laughs> so it's a small room. But I just wanted to tell you that you probably haven't seen this room, right? So it's on the second floor of the parish office center. And this is what we call the guest suite. This is the sitting room where there's a little love seat, chair, TV, and I'm sitting on a rocker. That's about it. Oh, and a little closet. And then next door will be the bedroom. And so there's a bed and a closet there and a little end table and a sitting chair. So, uh, this is available for, like I said, a seminary who's coming over to talk about the seminary appeal. So he's spending the weekend. Th these are his rooms. Uh, a missionary, you know, like, you know, Father Chuck's challenge. So this will be the missionary suite or a co mission co-op. Have you ever heard of that? Well, this will be their suite. So we have something for visitors. Uh, we have a sitting room and a bedroom for them. So I'm in the sitting room of the parish office center and the sitting room of the guest suite. So I wanted to bring this to you today. I want to change it up a little bit. You don't want to see me in the kitchen all the time, do you? 
Well, <laughs> you see, see me in other offices, right? So today we're going to continue with the commandments. We're on commandment number four. Honor thy father and thy mother. You want to bring the kids in for this one? <laughs> because this is important. This goes to show you the primacy that God has placed with parents. With parents. We're celebrating Father's Day this weekend. So how beautiful it is for us to talk about mothers and fathers. The prime responsibility they had for parenting their children in the ways of faith. This is part of the Ten Commandments. It's a responsibility for mom and dads to make sure that they teach their children about God, about Mass, about the sacraments, about the gospel stories, about the virtues, about the spiritual and corporal works of mercy. It's all about that. Mom and dads are the first and best teachers of the faith to their children. Yes, better than me on a Sunday morning, mom and dads have it. You know, John Paul II, I want to put my coffee mug down. Uh, John Paul II would say that parents are the pastors of the domestic church. So your home, your home should mirror in one way or another the parish church. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, let's talk about it. Are there religious paintings, crucifix? Susan, do you want to show everybody the cross and the, uh, the painting in this room? This is of St. Faustina, and there's a beautiful crucifix above me. So there is a, in the sitting room of our guest suite, uh, we have always religious images uh, and crucifixes around here because it's something beautiful. Uh, so anyway, I think the home should have religious icons, images, crucifixes, statues around. Now, it's nice to have a crucifix in each room. You know what's sad? I have to tell you something. I would ask the kids, do you have a crucifix in your bedroom? Do you know that some kids say to me, no? I said, okay, we have to work on that. <laughs> <laughs> we have to work on that. We have to make sure the kids have a crucifix, mom and dad, in their bedroom. Please make sure and, and bring it to church. I'll bless it. I'll bless it for you and you can hang it up. But please make sure that you have a crucifix, at least a crucifix and an image of Our Lady. An image of Our Lady is always important because Our Lady is the bearer of the word made flesh. Our Lady is that vehicle of graces that came through her that God saved the world. So Our Lady holds prime importance, okay? So yeah, they have their sports figures or they have their ballerina ladies and, and they have their like movie stars and all that kind of stuff that kids are into or their cars or sports or footballs. I understand all that, absolutely. Don't ever take that out from them. But, you know, both end, not either or. So what about the religious stuff? Is there a crucifix above the bed? Is there a image of Our Lady uh, or a guardian angel image or whatever? Make sure that's in there. Sometimes you could even put a holy water font and, you know, fill it for them and tell them when they're saying their night prayers to dip their hand in and bless themselves, right? It's all good stuff. So the home should be a domestic church where the family prays together. Now, during this pandemic, you probably have a prayer station Maybe where you watch the Mass on TV and then you light a candle or you set a table with an altar cloth. You have an image of the crucifix or a statue of Mary. It's nice to have a prayer corner. So the family gathers for prayer. You know, that's very good. And then prayer leaders. Mom and dad appoints prayer leaders each day. Like Joey, you're going to be the prayer leader tomorrow. Mary, you're going to be the prayer 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 reader on Sunday and then or daddy's going to be the prayer leader on Sunday because it's Father's Day or something like that do you know what I mean so you you really cultivate a a home of prayer and a home where you where you discuss things especially when you come home from mass spend five can I ask you to spend 10 minutes in just discussing the homily like just say to the kids 
can you give me two or three points of what the homily was about or what the gospel was about in your words? What was Jesus trying to convey to the listeners, to all of us? And that's it. Don't do any more. Don't aggravate them because they want to go out and do their thing and they want to play all their gadgets. But I mean, at least you have time to talk about faith and to discuss something with them because that's what they need. They need their mom and dads to be the pastors of the local church, which is their home. They need, that's what John Paul II said. Mom and dad has to, see the, has to be the shepherds of the home. That's what pastor mean, shepherd. And so to discuss the faith, to pray, to talk about, you know, conflict resolution, you know, fighting and getting along and forgiving and all of those virtues that we need to do. So anyway, honor your father and your mother all the way from the Ten Commandments, back in the time of Moses. Well, yes, because mom and dads work with God in bringing about life. You would say they're co-creators with God. Could you imagine bringing a human life into this world? Isn't it unbelievable? Human life with a soul that's entrusted to your care? I don't want to get you too nervous, but I mean, boy, that's a big responsibility. But mom and dads have that. And that's what God has given to them. And But we have to honor and respect them because they speak on behalf of God. Honor your father and your mother. That whole image of God as parent, God as guardian, God as protector, God as forgiver, God as provider. Beautiful. So I want you to think about that, especially those who take care of us. Maybe, maybe it's a mom taking care of everything. She takes on the role of both mom and dad. Or maybe it's a dad that takes care of the kids and it's both the dad is both mom and dad. That's beautiful. That's extra responsibility. Well, hey, listen, we're all asked to do our share. And I think we need to respect, respect people who have given us life or who parent us, or in some cases, both end, right? I, I, I have all the respect for step parents. I all have all the respect for adoptive parents, hmm? right? Single parents, beautiful, but all to show respect, that's honor, to respect those who care for us in the name of God. Let's think about that. As we celebrate the solemnity of the most sacred heart of Jesus, may God continue to flood us with the most precious gift of all, the gift of love, and may your home be a home of love, peace, and security, all protected by God through the guidance of our mom and our dad. Honor your father and your mother. Have a nice day, everybody.